This is going to be my simple tutorial on how to set up GPG, the GNU implementation of the OpenPGP standard. If you want to skip straight to the practical part, you can click on the link for your operating system on the side. Otherwise, listen on for a brief description of what PGP is and why we use it. Given that I'm trying to stay quite simple, I'm not going to get into much of the math behind PGP as beautiful as it might be. It's an asymmetric encryption method that solves two major problems for us. The first, and the one that is important to new solvers in Cicada, is the question of how to be sure online that something being said is being said by who you think it is, and is unchanged from their original message. A real-world metaphor for this would be something like using custom wax seals on letters in the hopes that it would be obvious if it had been open and changed. The way PGP accomplishes this is by having a public and a private key. When Cicada or anyone really signs a message using their private key, the bounding signature is created by using both the text of the message and the key itself. What their public key allows us to do is to check that message and see who the original author was, and more importantly for this, see if it's been changed from its original message, the message that created that bounding signature. That's important because it leaves literally no room for confusion on its legitimacy. It's a powerful tool, and likely somewhat hard to understand how it works if you haven't interacted with asymmetric encryption before. I'm probably going to link to some people who'll do it more justice than I will, uh, instead of making this an unnecessarily long video. For clarity, the other problem PGP was designed to solve was the same as every encryption method. It's how to allow communications that are unreadable to all recipients other than the one you intended it for. And that's done in the same way, really. It, it's using the public and the private key. It allows you to take their public key, which you have, and use it to encrypt a message that cannot be decrypted by anyone other than the person holding the private key that matches that. If that's hard to picture how or why that works, think of it like they've given you in advance a padlock. Once you find something that you want to lock, you put the padlock on it, and just because you were carrying it the whole time doesn't mean you can now get it off of that. You have to give it back to them and have them unlock it with their key. That's sort of the, the metaphor for how the public key allows you to encrypt something just for them. So that's going to be it for our description of what PGP is and our really brief how it works, mostly metaphorical there. As I said, there'll be links if you want to see the math involved, and otherwise, we're just going to get into the OS-specific tutorials. All right, guys, this is going to be the Linux part of the tutorial. Now, I'm assuming if you've used Linux before that you already know how to download packages. If you don't, this is how you do it on Arch. You'll have to look up how to do it on your particular installation. But the package we're looking for here is GNUPG. It's the GNU implementation of the OpenPGP standard. So once we've got it, we're going to use the key ID that Cicada gave us in that first message to use the search command here and find their public key, which we're going to download a copy of for our own use on our local computer. You can go ahead and put that information in, and thankfully it only gives us one option, which makes this pretty simple. So now we can actually use that to verify anything that they've signed. I'll show an example here, and as you can see, it's a good signature from Cicada 3301, and it, we can see the date it was made. Uh, the only kind of strange thing here is that warning, and pretty much all that is is it's saying there's no basis for trust, and that's mostly because we don't have our own key pair or our own identity using this, so we're going to make one. So you can see the command gen key there, you're going to go ahead and put your information in here, mine's obviously going to be fake, and uh, the next step is going to be choosing a password to use, and it's really important, because it's actually the weakest step in this entire process. So you really want to do make sure you make a better one than I'm using here, for example. So if you want to use this key for anything real, it, it had better be strong. Now what it's doing here is generating entropy using your computer to try and get enough randomness to make an actually useful key. So we're just going to let it do that and skip ahead a bit. So you can see here our key is finished. You can see the fingerprint there. I'll show you the list keys here either way, but that's also going to get us the key ID for Cicada again, because we'll need it to sign. The point of signing it is pretty much just saying, you know, saying that you did your homework, this is guaranteed to be the person that you think it is, you're 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 quite certain of that, so you're putting kind of your own word of trust on the key. And as you can see through my awkward attempts there, the edit key command is what we want, and once we're in that, we want to sign it. It's just the command sign, you hit yes and put your password in and save that. 
So now the difference is, is we've taken our own name that we've generated, and we've kind of put it to Cicada saying, we guarantee this guy is the one he's saying he is. And that gets rid of our warning. That shows us that we have a level of trust in this key from here on out. And uh, that's pretty much it. We've got our key, we've got our ability to verify Cicada. Hey guys, this is going to be the Windows component of the tutorial. We're going to be using a bit of software called GPG for Win. We're downloading this off their website here. Uh, it's got everything you need for GPG as well as a GUI for it called Cleopatra. I'm going to assume you're good on Windows installers. It can use all the default installation settings just next your way through and we'll talk about it now that it's installed. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a key server to get their PGP key from. That's what we're doing here. So in the options there, I personally like uh, pgp.mit.edu. I'm sure lots of them work just fine, possibly even the default ones. But once you've gone ahead and put that in, you'll be able to search for their key using that. So go ahead and drop their name in here. And we're just going to pick the one off the list that matches the key ID that they gave us in that very first message about PGP. Wow, there's a lot of fakes in here, but we have the key ID, it doesn't matter, you can see the date they made it, the name and everything like that, so we know that's the right one. So we're going to import that, and uh, once we've got it imported, there's only one more thing we've got to do to verify using it, and that's make ourselves an ID to sign off on it. So if we go to File and New Certificate, we can make our own identity here. Uh, we want an open PGP key pair. You can just go ahead and throw your information in. Mine's going to be fake. Uh, you're going to have to create a key which requires you to put a password in for, you know, just unlocking it for use later. And why we're doing this is we're just creating an identity for ourselves that we can use to sign off on the Cicada PGP key that we got. Pretty much saying that we're verifying, we've done our homework, these are the right guys, this is the key we mean to be using, and from then on, whenever we try to verify something uh, using that key, it will know that that's the right fingerprint to be using. So to do that, we're going to certify certificate. We're going to grab that. We've verified, yep, that's the guy we're looking for. Uh, I usually certify only for myself. If you want it on the key servers, do for everyone. Throw your password in here, and what that will let us do from here on out is verify any of those signatures we see. So let's grab our example one. Just, uh, con you know, copy it all using control C. We're going to go decrypt verify under clipboard there. If we hit show details, there we go. We can see it's a good signature using the fingerprint we've added, what date it was signed on, and from here on out, we can verify anything like that that we get from Cicada, as well as using our own key to sign our own messages or that sort of thing. That's it for Windows.